Well, Doug Pawley joins us now live from Leeds and here with me is Simon Posner from the Confederation of Passenger Transport UK who are the trade body for the bus and coach industry. Doug Pawley, the judge in effect said that he didn't believe the needs of wheelchair users should trump the needs of others, namely parents in this case with a pushchair. I mean, what is your response to that? I think that frankly he got it wrong. Um, we believe very strongly that the Equality Act was designed to correct the bias, the difficulties that disabled people face day to day. You know, that wheelchair space is a wheelchair space. It was always designed as a wheelchair space and intended as one. There wouldn't be a wheelchair space or an a space on a bus if it wasn't for the campaigning efforts of disabled people who chained themselves to buses in the 1990s. And whilst I do appreciate that it's very difficult to get on a bus with a buggy um, and maybe other siblings and so on, ultimately it's a wheelchair space and if that wheelchair space isn't available to wheelchair users, we can't get on, you know, S Simon buggies can Cosner, be folded. Doug makes a fair point there, it is a wheelchair space. It's, he's absolutely right, and I, I agree with what he's saying. Actually, I have to say, that's not what we interpret the judge as having said today, that it's equal for, for buggy users as well. Today was a case about, be, about the reasonableness and what drivers can and can't compel people to do. That space is very, very clearly there for wheelchair users, and we, would, we will continue to ask politely and firmly anyone who's in that place to move it. But, I mean, clearly Doug's experience shows that that's not working, doesn't it, all well, the time? It didn't, it didn't work in this case. And I think if I remember read what I have read of the judgment, it doesn't seem like it's a regular problem that Doug's had here. But it's something that people need to work together and bus drivers need to work together. Today's case wasn't about saying that's for anyone other than a wheelchair user. It's about how much force a driver can use. I mean, Doug, do you accept that from the driver's point of view, it is extremely difficult that they, because there is no legally binding arrangement here, they don't want to get involved, they're unable to get involved effectively in, the, in a terrible scrap when common sense breaks down, shall we say. Yes, I would hate to be a driver. I've got immense respect for them. Uh, it must be a very difficult job, not just driving, but you know, you have to deal with antisocial behaviour um, all the time. Um, people eating smelly food, as was discussed a lot in the case, um, arguing, fighting, playing the music too loud. They have to deal with such conflict all the time, and they have a battery of techniques and training which helps them to deal with that. But can you uh, see why they wouldn't want to get involved? in what may become quite an ugly row between a wheelchair user and, and a woman refusing to move with a buggy. Yes, um, nobody wants to be in that situation, neither do I as the wheelchair user. Um, I would hope though that if the law had said differently, if it had come down on the side of the wheelchair user having priority, that that would have given the drivers some um, extra ammunition, some extra leverage to make, um, make that space available. You I mean, know. Simon Posner, we've covered the, the very many problems disabled travellers mm. can face getting access to transport. I mean, there will be many who say this gives carte blanche to your drivers now to see a person in a wheelchair at a bus stop and just drive straight past. That's absolutely not the case. We do a huge amount of money, it's, we put up a huge amount of money, put a huge amount of time into training drivers to make sure they don't do that. 99% of the time this problem doesn't exist, but our wheelchair users, in fact all our disabled passengers, are massively important to us and we've made huge strides to make sure they get on. We don't want to see a problem here. All we sought was clarification. But would you like to see the law changed in favour of making it absolutely rigid that this is a wheelchair We've got to space make, for we no one else? We then need to find out who is going to enforce that law, but that place is for wheelchair users. Every sign on the bus makes that absolutely plain. But the clearly driver in those instances where it doesn't well, work, disabled people in wheelchairs can be left at the side of the road. As buses go by, we know that. It can happen very, thankfully that's something that happens very rarely. People get left at the side of the road if a bus is full on uh, more than one occasion, I can assure you. But I, you've got to reiterate that this is a very isolated case and wheelchair users and all disabled people use our buses on a regular basis every day. Doug Pawley, do you accept that this is an isolated incident and that in fact you, know, you can be a mum with a buggy and a couple of kids and the bus can still drive past you because there's no room? 
I'm not saying that we're the only people who struggle on public transport, but what I can say is that there's been an awful number of people who have expressed considerable support for the case because they have experienced similar themselves up and down the country, and the other com uh, co companies such as Stagecoach say on their terms and conditions of carriage that other passengers must give up the space if required by a wheelchair user. So very briefly, what would you like Simon to do? I'd like Simon to join me in seeking proper clarity, which the judgment doesn't give, in supporting our appeal to the Supreme Court so that we have an answer absolutely clearly as to what the situation is. Doug Pawley and Simon Posner, thank you very much for joining us. John. Yeah.